Hello everyone, this is Prem and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about how tax works on share investment. So please watch this video till the end. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe as well. Thank you. Before going to the tax part, I would like to briefly explain the difference between share trading and share investment because share trading and share investments have completely different tax process. According to ATO, if your main intention to make profit and carry it out as a business and you do buy and sell shares repetitively, then you are a share trader or you are a carrying a business. On the other hand, if you hold shares for the purpose of earning income from dividends and similar receipts, then you are a share investor. Basically, if you hold for shares for longer periods, for example more than one year, then you are a share investor or you're doing share investment. If you are a share investor, then you need to keep in mind some points when you do tax return. The first point is purchase of a shares is not a liable deduction, which means if you have spent money to buy shares, then that expense cannot be used to reduce your assessable income. And the second point is gain from sales of shares is not assessable income, but it may be capital gain. And I have an example later in this video how capital gain works in the tax as well. Let's move on to another point. Losses from share shell cannot offset against income from other source, but can be offset against capital gain. Last but not least, cost such as interest on borrowed money. If you have borrowed money to buy shares and generate dividend as income, then you can use interest as allowable deduction. There are mainly two things you need to understand if you are a share investor, such as CGT even, capital gain or capital loss, and dividend. CGT even occurs when you dispose or sell shares. In this case, you may have gain or loss. There is a 50% CGT discount you can be benefited if you hold your shares more than 12 months. Let me give you an example to understand it more clearly. Let's assume share were bought at $10 including brokerage fee on 1st of Jan 2019 and sold it for $15 including brokerage fee on 2nd of March 2020, which is more than 12 months. In this example, sales price is $15 minus purchase price $10, which is $5 gain. Now I can use 50% CGT discount as the shares have been held for more than 12 months. $5 multiply 50% CGT discount equals to $2.50. $2.50 is your accessible income and this must be reported to ATO. Let me give you an example for loss as well. Before I go through example, I want to point out one thing. You cannot use 50% CGT discount before you use your loss, which means you have to first use loss to reduce your gain, then use 50% discount. Let's go through an example, then you will understand what I meant. Share A made $100 gain and Share B made $50 loss, which means $100 gain minus $50 loss equals to $50 gain. Now apply $50 CGT discount which is $50 multiply 50% equals to $25. So $25 is your accessible income and it must be reported to 8 here. Now let's move on to dividend part. A dividend is the distribution of reward from a portion of company's profits and is paid to its shareholders. Dividend is an income so it attracts tax. There are two things in dividend payment, franked or unfranked. Frank dividend meaning franking credit have already been deducted from the dividend and unfranked meaning there is not any franking credit attached to dividend. Frank can be fully and partially. Fully frank meaning all the dividend amount have franking credit and partially meaning partial dividend amount have franking credit. These information you can get it from your dividend and payment detail statement as well. Let's go through an example to understand how to include dividend payment in your tax return. I have fully franked dividend. Fully franked $70 dividend received on March 2019 and franking credit would be $30. 
you can use this formula to find the before franc amount which is $70 divided by 70% then would be $100 then just deduct the dividend received balance is franking credit which is $30 anyway you can find this information from dividend and payment details once you get the franc amount and franking credit you need to add those amounts in this example $70 plus $30 which is $100 $100 is your accessible income and $30 will be used to reduce your tax payable as franking credit let me show you how to include dividend and capital gain in tax return let's see an example in the example salary is 50,000 capital gain is $25 which is from previous example and dividend is $100 which is also from previous example so that gives you total accessory income is 50,125 let's assume you had a allowed deduction is $1,000 so your taxable income is $49,125 so which gives us taxable amount is 7,512 excluding Medicare levy however you already paid $8,000 and thirty dollar to ATO through pay as you go withheld eight thousand and franking credit thirty dollar. So your tax refundable amount is five hundred eighteen dollar. All right, that's the end of the video. I hope you found this video very useful. Then please do like and subscribe. And if you have any comment or suggestion, please comment below. Thank you for watching and see you in next video.